mother think of it all If they don't give me room, well then I'll give them the wall I'm gonna smoke my tires when the victory calls I'm gonna be there, be there I wanna see my face up on the jumbo screen Feel the white hot metal of a winning machine Because you win or you lose and there's no in between I wanna be there, be there, be there NASCAR on speed It is time for the final Target Series chase. We're here at the Pocono Raceway in Long Pine, Pennsylvania for the running of the Gertrude Hawk 250, the first of eight races to determine a Target Series champion in the final season. On pole to one of our chasers, Jake Richardson in the 39, to his outside starting in second is the 17 of Ross McTrain. In third place, Felix Jensen. In fourth, it's Jordan Stout. And rank at the top five, the 28 of Code Red. Starting in 6th, we have Ad McDowell. In 7th, it's Samet Oskin. In 8th place, Eric Olsen. Two chasers in 9th and 10th, Jeff Wright and the 4 of Landon Lyons. Back by the we have Chaser Will Grimm at one of our wildcard spots. The two's inside Eli Bright in the 8th. Then there's Riley Spurge with the 22. Bron Smith with him the 07. Then there's Chaser Zachary DeLello in the 81. Jose Mills won the championship last season, but not in the chase for this season. Then there's Keyshawn Richardson and Jake Galloway, the 20, along with Kenny Walrus and the 90 of Brandon Beal. Then there's Jay Jefferson and Nolan Lawrence in the 51, along with the 7 of Justin Zidell, Brett Sierra's teammate, to his inside. Then we have Chaser DJ Reed in the 18, Brendan Sarland to his outside, along with two more chasers, Anthony Hernandez and the driver came as number one seed, Danny Lloyd in the 21. Then there's Mathis Wells and Marshall Burrell. Two more chasers, they're Jennifer Buford and Conrad Evans. Then there's Jay Brando and Matthew Burnett, along with Evan Hunter and Ronan Curtis, Jonathan Buford and Luke Rainey. And then the final row, two more chasers round out the field. It's Levi Jones in the second seed, Colton Yo in the 01. So there's our 40 car field for racing around this two and a half mile triangle in Pocono, Pennsylvania. We're gonna go down tracks and to fire these edges up for 15 laps in the Gertrude Dog 250. One of the most unique racetracks in the United States will kick off this Target Series chase, the two and a half mile tricky triangle in Long Pine, Pennsylvania, Northeastern Pennsylvania, ready to go green here in Pocono for 15 laps to kick off the chase in the final Target Series season. One of our chasers, Jake Richardson, will this green flag. He got the second and final wildcard spot. That is the position that won the championship last season with Jose Mills. As they come down the front stretch, the green flag is waving in the air. We're underway from Pocono. Turn one lap one, which caused issues in the Penzo Truck Series race here at PSG yesterday, but no such issues for these Target Series drivers on lap number one as Jake Richardson from pole gets away. Code Red moves up to second with a nice run through turn three as they come off that final quarter for the first of today. Side by side, the first lap one will go to Jake Richardson. However, in this chase, there is no bonus points for leading laps. The only points you get is where you finish, and if you win, you get three additional points add on to your totals. Code Red gets pushed from Matt Oskin by Richardson to turn one. Now, Red slides up the track. Here comes Oskin. Oscar to the inside. Here comes the one of Jeff Wright to the inside as well. And Jeff's teammate Eli Bright just behind him trying to help him forward. The Bright's on the inside. Jeff is in the chase. Eli is not. So obviously, Eli would want to push Jeff up there to try and get the lead. But Oscar in front of them will go to the lead in the tunnel turn. But now Oskin slides up. Here comes Jeff to the inside. The one Eli actually almost won this race last season, but was passed late by Roman Fenway in the 89. So we'll see if Eli can try and keep that success here Pocono going or if it's going to happen again. Oskin got to the wall in turn three right there. He'll drop back now on the outside behind Code Red and Eli Bright as Chaser Jeff Bright lead off turn number three. We'll lead the second lap here in Pocono. So, so far here today, two laps complete. Two chasers have led. 
Jeff Bright and Jake Richardson. Code Red wants second back to turn one. Looking inside the eight of Eli Bright. Jeff Bright trying to maintain out in front. Eli gets a nice run in second. Rotates that eight car well. Might look to the inside here down Long Pond straight away. There he goes to the inside of his father, Jeff. Down the back stretch, Eli pulls low. That's down in front of Code Red, Ross McTrain. Then the next chaser on the inside, Zachary Lillo of the 35 with Kenny Walrus just behind him in the 99. Eli Bright to clear and lead off the tunnel turn. The eight moves out in front. Code Red now for a second. He mentioned Kenny Walrus. Uh, you know, he got the highest chaser points in the Penzone Truck Series race yesterday. Finished third in that one. So he knows it to get around this tricky triangle. Looking to do it in these Target Series cars for another victory. Moves up on the inside, trying to move up inside the top five. As the front two get away, it's Eli Bright leading Code Red down the front stretch. Eli Bright in the eight with the lead to turn one. Double foul behind, no three wide quite yet. They're keeping it orderly. This race last season did not have a single yellow flag. So these Target Series drivers, especially those of the chase, hoping that that stays true this season. Nice run for Red through one. Got to the back of Eli Bright. Could go anywhere with it, though. Could not get that car back to the bottom. But in the draft, we'll have a run to the inside. There goes Code Red for the lead in Pocono. Kenny Walrus, 99, with them on the inside lane. Off to the tunnel turn. Red's going to slide up. That gives the bottom to the 99. Walrus trying to get back low for the lead. Jeff Bright, the one cycle back down the bottom. He moves low for fifth as out in front moves the 99 of Kenny Walrus. He clears Code Red easily. And Jeff now back on teammate and son Eli Bright to move Jeff back, back to fourth. And here comes that 18 of DJ Reed, one of those drivers in the championship fight. Reed moving up nicely from his mid pack starting position. It's not as, uh, as noticeable in these Target Series cars, but obviously the Chasers have red numbers on the roof and red spoilers. It's hard to see the spoilers at points because of how small they are, how low downforce these cars are. Spoilers, spoilers are very small, so. Hard to see those, but the red number on the roof, it's not as noticeable as the yellow in the Pencil Truck Series, but still a decent way to pick out who's a chaser, who's not. Around if they're the target red on the spoiler or the roof of that car and the number, then they are in the postseason. We'll see tomorrow with the Gatorade Cup Series cars, the orange on the spoiler and the roof numbers. Well, Chaser Reed has just flown through the pack on that last lap. He was sixth at the line. Moved to second here as they come off three and with ten to go. Reed up to second as Kenny Walrus continues to lead the 99. A great lap for him. He pulls away from the battle for a second as Burl looks low on Reed to turn one. Reed trying to get trapped from the 99. Here comes the 12th of Ad McDowell. Two-time Target Series champion. Did it in back-to-back -back seasons. But has not had much success in the Target Series since those championships. Not in the championship fight this season. However, looking for one final one to go out on in this Target Series crew. Moving low for third on the 52 Burl. But has to get back in line. while trending up for the 12. I think they all have to get back in line because they have to run this 9-9 down some point. Walrus has done a great job keeping that lead holding it and just able to stretch it if not maintain it. Some contact a little bit further back. I think that was Eli Bright, the 8 in the middle. Couldn't tell who it was up top to his outside. That's actually Chaser Jake Richardson. 17 McTrain to the inside. So Eli getting a little close with Chaser Richardson through three. Luckily they sort back back down to double foul, but a little bit three right back here. Levi Jones was the last seed in this, or the, the, the last seed inside the top 10, the 10th seed. To his outside, Colton Yo was the second seed. They're in a both around mid-pack. They both started on the last row. They've made decent progress. Jones can be inside the top three. He can stand the inside this lap, so that's a good recovery for Levi. Starting back in, I think it was 39th. He moved up inside the top 20 now and actually passed Jake Richards, who started on pull in this race. So not too shabby for Jones, who started on the back row. Richards started first row, and he just passed him here midway through. Brent Sarlin coming up with him. You have, obviously, the double zero, John, the beat for the 17th. Lost train. Oh, some contact there. The double zero getting beneath the 17th and forcing him aside. That allows Jones with a nice run to the bottom. Code Red falling back in the 28th. Was trying to lead some laps early on, but now back outside the top 15. John, the beat moves around him, but... The one you have to look at of the Bufords is Jennifer, who won the championship back in season five, and she's still trying to make her way up on the inside. Conrad Evans also back here in the 89. They're trying to make their way forward as Reed looks for the lead at the head of the pack, looking on Wallace, but has no help down low. We have to look at the chasers back here, and one of them is the first seed, Danny Lloyd, who would dominate the second half of the regular season. Kind of faltered in the last few. Maybe thought he, he was saving some stuff, but right now he's not performing well. One of the last chasers in this field, so... If you're Danny Lloyd's team, are you a little bit worried at this stage of the race? They have not been able to bring that speed from what we see in the regular season up to where it is now in the postseason. Almost four wide through the tunnel turn. Luckily, McDowell backed out of that, and so did Burrow. But they were close to four wide. As now Reed looks to get low in three for the lead. Kenny has not had a challenge since he got the lead, but that will change through three. DJ Reed in the 18 moves out in front once again in Pocono. 
They'll bring two-time champion Amigdal with them. McDowell now second. There's Brunson making the 07 move and low. Looking for third. Burl and Hernandez coming the 11. So a nice run for Anthony Hernandez so far early on in this opening round of the chase. With seven to go, there's still lots of time for things to turn sideways. Those so McDowell wants the lead in turn one. Gets a nice run on the bomb. It's about as good as you can get down there. We'll see if you can try and maintain the bomb of the racetrack. Down a long punch right away the race. The second of the longest speedways, or the longest straightaways around the speedway. McDowell throws it in deep. Lucky there's the 18 year He's going to put Reed into the wall, but that might be all for now because Walrus has a nice run off the tunnel turn because he was able to get his car pointed down to the bottom. Got back at the gas sooner, and Walrus wants to lead back in the 9 9. And how about Pennsylvania of Luke Randy moving up on the inside? Nice run for the two drivers, not had a great season, but once he win in, in this final target series season, moving up on Chaser and Hernandez down the front stretch. Minnick trying to move to second and will clear the 12. So we have two Pennsylvanians at the front of the field, Minnick and Luke, as they'll race three wide for third to turn one. Luke on the inside, Hernandez in the middle, down low, also Reed up top, Adam McDowell. Six laps to go in Pocono. Zach Delello, another chaser moving up here. 42, Will Graymont, as we mentioned, one of the wild card spots. And Levi Jones up inside the top 15. Trying to come back, Landon Lines on the fourth. That is a point for these chasers. Once again, how this championship system works in terms of the chase. The chasers are not racing the non-chasers. They're only racing each other. Levi just wants to pass chasers out here because they're the only ones that gain a point. The highest finishing chaser gets 12. And of 12 chasers, then second place gets 11, third gets 10, on down to last place getting one point. The only way a chaser can try and gain more points than that is if a chaser wins one of these chase races, they add on three points to their 12 points, they get 15 instead of 12. That's if, though, they win the race. And right now, the only one currently in position to do that is the 18 of Breeders up in third. Hernandez on the outside falling back a little bit as Luke looks for a run on Kenny Walrus. Hernandez actually trying to clear Chaser DeLello to get in line into the tunnel turns. A nice run. DeLello might get forced high by Graymont here. That's what the third or the 11 wanted to see right there. Luke Green wants the lead from Kenny Walrus. Forward to go to the line. Pennsylvania of Luke Rainey moves to the inside. Kenny off to the third turn. Luke Rainey out in front at Pocono now. And Reed for second gets a nice run through turn three. So Chaser moves up to second, trying to get those bonus points early on. Every point matters under this system. We've seen it so many times in the past. We saw it last season in this Target Series Championship. Every single point matters. Well, we'll see who can try and strike first in this chase. Zydell has had a quiet day, but he's up now inside the top five to fourth, looking for a third on Kenny Walrus. Two chasers beating and bang through one and two. That's Graham on the inside, Hernandez on the outside. Levi Schoen still coming up in the 08, trying to get more spots as he's been flying through this field. He's currently inside the top 10 now in the 08, just past Adam McDowell in the 12. Zydell that pass on Walrus actually lost on the spot to Burrow, who's trying to get it back. And now Luke running the outside, DJ Reed on the inside. They'll drag race to turn three again. This time, rolls reverse. The 18th on the bottom, the two's up top. And DJ Reed moves out in front through three. And Kenny back up to second, gets a nice run through turn three and gets a great exit. Really good corner for Kenny Walrus to three to go right here. On his outside, one of the chasers trying to win this race for bonus points, but Kenny just wants to win. Off to turn number one once again. Yellow flag would end this race under the caution. It would end it short. Zydell wants to go three wide. Peaks the nose to the inside of the 99. Graymont, where does he go in the 42? Does he go with the middle? Does he go with the bomb? He'll go with the middle. That's Kenny. Pushes the 99 clear for now, but Zydell still inside of both the 42 and the 18. He has two chasers, two's outside. Has to be careful with that. They're going to make some contact through the tunnel turn. But they sort out the 42 and the 18 did. I think Zydell also lifted a little bit, knowing that was happening. But now that's going to allow Kenny to pull away. Two to go this time by Luke Rennie Bells for a second. Here comes Levi Jones on the inside. With Jones' pass right there, he's now the highest chaser. He was the 11th starting chaser back in 40 or back in 39th now he's fourth place with two to go and sees only three cars in front of him for the race win can Sean try and win it from 39th place on the grid Luke at the late move to turn one I don't know if Kenny was expecting it but they they gave each other room but that was a very impressive move by Luke Green that late into the corner door to door two non-chasers lead the way a third one just behind, that's Keyshawn Richardson. And our highest chaser is currently in fourth. That's Levi Jones. But front loop, Freddie clears Kenny Walrus. Here comes Levi to run through the tunnel turn. 
The white flag this time by Luke Rennie gets a nice gap in the two, finished well in this race last season. That was the start of his championship chances in the Target Series. Can it be the start of Levi Shones's? He's up to second, off of three. White flag displayed for Luke Rennie one more time around Pocono. I think it'd only be fitting if a Pennsylvania Nave won the final poke in a race at the target series, but there's still two and a half miles to go. Anything can happen on this lap. Three distinct corners to go through. That was a great turn one for Luke Rainey. Levi Schoen's kind of missed the apex there a little bit, had to lift out of the gas tank, get off the corner as well. Luke, though, now giving draft to the 08 down this backstretch for the final time. But they're too far back. They're going to battle for a second. To the inside goes the 15 of Matthew Burnett. Shones now trying to maintain the high. Shazer points guy put in the wall by the 15. And now Shones' chances have just gone away as there goes DeLello to his inside read. Up in the front, Luke Rennie, Kenny Walrus pull away to turn three. And it's going to be a Pennsylvania winning the final Pocono Target Series race. Off of three, Luke Rennie and the two will win it in Pocono. Kenny Walrus second. The highest year looks like it was DeLello in the 35. He ended up in third. But Luke Rainey will get done in the two. The final target series race as the Pocono Raceway goes to one of the Pennsylvania guys. Walrus in second. There's DeLello. Highest chaser points in third. Reed in fourth. Hernandez in fifth. And Schultz in sixth. We have to think for Levi. He is not going to be pleased with Matthew Burnett putting him into the wall in the tunnel turn. That cost him three points. He was going to be the highest chaser. But then Levi fell down to the fourth chaser, it looks like. So that was... Not a good last half lap for Levi Schultz. Still a really, really good run for him. Just starting back in the last row, but he'll definitely have some work from Matthew Burnett after that little contact in the tunnel turn. A crazy one to start out the chase. Let's go see the finish results on the points. Here's how they finished in the Gertrude 250 at the Pocono Raceway. No caution flags in this race here today. In nine, leech into six drivers led in Pocono and getting out front at the end at the right time, starting back in 37th. Luke Rennie led three laps in round to Victory Land's home track here in Pocono's first win on the season. To second place, Kenny Walrus led seven of the 15 laps in almost anyone today, but ends up in that second position. Zach DeLello, highest chaser points in third, DJ Reed in fourth, and Anthony Hernandez finishes in fifth. Finishing in sixth, Levi Schoens, Bronze Mick in seventh, Matthew Burnett eighth, Will Raymond ninth, and rounding out the top ten, Marshall Burrell in the 52. Inside the top ten, no one started there. So everyone who finished inside the top 10 starts 12th or worse. And look at the top five. Luke Rain started 37th, Reed 25th, Hernandez 27th, and even further back. Schoens in 39th finished 6th, and Burnett from 34th to 8th. So it was a really, really good day to be starting mid-pack or back of the field. You're able to make your way up pretty nicely in this running order. And look at all the chasers that finished well. Three inside the top five. Zach Zalello, DJ Reed, Anthony Nash is below them. Levi Shones just below them. Wilk Raymond, five chaser finish inside the top 10. Seven inside the top 15 as Richardson finishes in 13th. Lyons finishes in 14th. And you look down then the next chaser, Conrad Evans down in 20th. He was the eighth chaser. So eight chasers inside the top 20. More importantly, five inside the top 10. Those are chasers that brought their A game here today at Pocono. Some chasers who did not fare well. Colton will start back in 40th. That's a good rebound up to 23rd. You think about, you know, in the Penzel Truck Series race, that would maybe be about six, seven points. But today, it was only four because chasers did so well. And you look down even farther. Jeff Bright started ninth. Led a lap early on, but could never get that one car back to the bottom when he got put on the outside. Kept getting shuffled back to 29th. That is a mulligan used up early on. Even worse for Danny Lloyd, who came in on a hot streak in the 21, but momentum kind of lacked at the end of the regular season. That lack of momentum cost them here. 34th for the 21 start in 28th. They never made any ground up, never made any noise in this race. So for Danny Lloyd, he's now down 11th in points after one race. And obviously, Jennifer Beaufort also not what she wants. She came as the fourth seed, only gets one point here today at Pocono. There are the points on the right side, obviously just how the Chasers finished in a row. That's what they'll be in points for now. So DeLello, one point up on Reed, who's one point up on Hernandez, who's one point up on Schoen, so on and so forth, down to Jennifer Buford with one point. So obviously, in an eight-race chase, one race isn't going to make or break the championship. Obviously, you want to have a great race every time, but that is that that usually does not happen. So uh, you can have a, a bad race or two that's normally... The, the max, though, if you have any more than two, you start to think, oh, boy, that's going to be hard. And for drivers who didn't have a good day here, uh, you know, you, you, you've used up a mulligan over and you're thinking, all right, next race out, you have to go and you have to be perfect to try and make sure you don't dig yourself a hole that is impossible to get out of. So the second race of this Target Series chase will head to the Kentucky Speedway for the KFC 300. I'll see you guys then.